Hello. In this problem, we're going to determine whether this integral is improper or proper, and whether it converges or diverges. So right away, we can tell it's improper because we have an infinity symbol in one of the limits of integration. So whenever that happens, um, you know right away that it's improper. Now we have to integrate it and determine if it converges or diverges. If we get an answer like 2 or 3 or 4, a number, then we know it converges. If we don't get a number, so if we get something like infinity or negative infinity or D and E, then we know that it will diverge. So because this integral is going to take a little bit more work to do, um, let's focus on the indefinite integral, and then at the very end of the problem, we'll do uh, the one with the uh, limits of integration. So to do this problem, we're going to use something called tabular integration. So tabular. So tabular integration works when one of the factors after repeated differentiation is eventually zero. In this case, that factor is x squared. So you write down the x squared, and then you just start differentiating. So 2x is the derivative, and then 2, and then 0. So again, one of the factors has to be eventually 0. Then you write down the other piece, and you integrate it. Whenever you integrate e to the negative x, all you have to do is divide by negative 1. So you just keep dividing by negative 1. So when you do it the first time, you get negative e to the negative x. Do it again, it'll become positive. Do it again, it'll become negative. Again, it's just a trick. You just keep dividing by the coefficient. So if it was like e to the 2x, you would just get e to the 2x over 2, and then e to the 2x over 4, etc. All right, so you take the derivative of one of the pieces. It has to be 0. You integrate the other piece, and then you start putting symbols, and you always start with the plus. Okay, so plus, minus, plus, minus. And then you draw arrows like this, arrows. Then you follow the arrows and you multiply, and that's the answer. So the indefinite integral of x squared e to the negative x with respect to x is equal to, and again, all we're doing now is following the arrows. This will be equal to, let's see, follow the first arrow. So negative x squared e to the negative x. Follow the second arrow, negative 2x e to the negative x. That's the second arrow there. Follow the third arrow, negative, another negative, ridiculous, and then plus c. All right, good stuff. Fun times. Okay, so now let's finish this problem. So this... This one here is going to be, write it here, 0 to infinity, x squared e to the negative x dx. To do this, what you do is you replace the um, infinity with a variable. So I like to use a, a b. I always like to use b. It's just, I like little b. So then we take the limit, and then we let b approach what we replaced. So we got rid of the infinity, so it approaches infinity. Then we have x squared, e to the negative x, dx. So this is equal to, let me scroll down a little bit. Actually, let me go to the next line. I'm concerned about room here. Limit, b to infinity. And we've already worked this out, this integral. We've worked out the indefinite one. It's up here. So I'm going to write it down again. Except I'm not going to write down the c, because that's going to cancel, right? When you subtract, it's going to go away. So we have negative x squared e to the negative x minus 2x, e to the negative x minus 2, e to the negative x, and we're going from 0 to b. All right, then you plug in the b first, so this is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity. Plugging in the b for all the x's, that will give us negative b squared, e to the negative b minus 2b, e to the negative b, minus 2, e to the negative b. So you put b's where all the x's are. Then you subtract, and then you put zeros where all the x's are. Now, because we have three terms here, um, I'm going to put parentheses. So parentheses. So the first one's going to be 0, minus, oh, look at that, 0, 
minus 2e to the 0, and then bracket. Again, we plugged in um, all the b's, subtracted, plugged in all the zeros. Let's go ahead and rewrite this in a more familiar way. This is the limit as b approaches infinity. So now what you can do is you can bring all of these e's downstairs. This will be bracket negative b squared over e to the b minus 2b over e to the b minus 2 over e to the b and then plus 2. All right, the plus 2 comes from the multiplication here, right? The negative 1 and the negative 2. And then here's where, you know, you can kind of just hopefully look at it and, and get the answer. Um, the idea is that these will be zero because exponentials grow faster than the things that are up top, which are polynomials. So each of these pieces is going to be zero, zero, and zero because b squareds are quadratic, e to the b is exponential, so when b gets really, 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 really big, the bottom grows faster, so this eventually gets small and it approaches zero. So this is zero minus zero minus zero plus two. So it's just two. So the answer is two, and because we got an answer, we know that it converges, right? Um, some people like to show the work here, but you reach a point where you can't show the work, like here. You know, 2 over e to the b. You really can't show the work there unless you do like a formal proof. And that's really just overkill for this type of problem. You could use L'Hopital's rule on these. But again, whenever you have, you know, a polynomial, like b, b squared over an exponential, and it's approaching infinity, you're going to get 0. Because the e grows faster than all the things up top. I hope this video has been helpful to anyone out there who's trying to learn some calculus. Good luck and take care.